Hi, my name is Con Bien, and I'm in cluster four um, computer security. And today, my presentation is about biometrics um, and the types of vulnerabilities and the philosophy of biometrics. Uh, I'll, I was going to ask you guys, you know, if you know what biometrics mean, but Eric and Chai both did it on biometrics, so you know that biometrics means um, using behavioral and biological attributes to authenticate a person. Um, do you guys know where you would use this? Like Chai said, in a home alarm system. Um, Eric said, you know, in high security places. Any other ideas? No? No? Okay. Maybe the voter ID? Voter ID, yeah, voter ID. Um, well, you can use it to authenticate a person um, by saying, oh, if they came to work, if you work in like the CIA or something, you'll be like, Hand geometry. You can use hand geometry to be like, oh, you're here on time. Um, this is how many hours you work. You can use it for um, physical access into an area or um, access to a resource. You can use it for online transactions. That's where you use signature ver verification um, to buy something or anything like that. National identity um, documentation, you know, to um, at a court or something. Border control and, and industrial processes. Yeah, that's your exact same <laughs> Um So there is also um, a standard that biometrics has to meet, and if uh, the standard is not met, it's called the biometric three. If the standard is not met, the biometric system will com be considered a failure. And the three um, standards are integrity, confidentiality, and availability. availability. If one of those standards are compromised, then the system will be considered a failure. Um, well, I guess here are the different types. Um, there are hand geometry, voice verification, signature verification, keystroke dynamic, fingerprint recognition, retinal scanning, iris scanning, gait recognition, facial scanning, <laughs> vein scanning, and scent recognition. I like the last one best. You know, so take a shower before you go to work. Um, so uh, most of these, you already know geometry, hand geometry is measuring the length of your fingers and the distance between your fingers and palm. Um, voice verification, you know, you test the dynamic of your voice and the enunciation. Signature verification, keystroke dynamic, you know, that fingerprint recognition. That one, people don't really know, but there's a dichotomy in that. There are two ways you can use fingerprint scanning. One is to identify as in matching um, one person, like verifying if you are that um, correct person. And the other way you can use it is by um, matching it to a database and checking all the different fingerprints and saying, oh, this is that person. Um, then there's retinal scanning where, and iris scanning that um, Eric covered. And you use a laser beam or, I mean, a light beam and you'll <laughs> measure, <laughs> maybe not laser beam, <laughs> light beam. And then you'll check the pattern of the iris and you'll check the vein pattern inside um, your iris and your eyes. Um, gait recognition is how you walk. Different people have some different types of walk, like, I don't know, like the swag walk, you know, for example, people who do that, you'll know exactly what that is. Um, I can be like, oh yeah, you know, the um, trice walk. That's a swag walk. You know, you can see him walking like a mile away. <laughs> um, then there's facial recognition and vein scanning and scent scanning. That's all, that all makes sense. You know, I can like smell Kimberly from like two floors down. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can smell freshmen after PE because the, the ax comes uh, like two blocks ahead of them. Yep, exactly, the smell. Um, <laughs> We also have um, electrophysiological biometrics, which is a really new and experimental type of biometrics. It's where you um, ch you record the electrical activity um, from your heart and your brain and your muscles to um, verify who that person is, because each person has a different response to things. So there, <laughs> there are different ways um, that you can check the electrocardiogram is checking your heart pulses. Um, electroencephalogram is that one's checking your brain activity through the scalp. You put patches on your scalp, and then EOG, um, electrooculogram, is checking your eye movement. Electromyogram, checking your muscle movement. Um, sensory evoked potential is like if I poked you, and it will check how your muscle reacts to that. And the last one is event related potential is 
well, I was going to drop the book, but none of you are sleeping. But if I, if one of you were sleeping and I dropped the book, you would wake up, and that would be a sensory. I mean, that would be an ERP event-related potential. Um, here are some fingerprints. Um, here's a picture of a fingerprint, and you can pass it around. And okay, fine, don't, don't pass it around. <laughs> and then you can check. Here are the different types of fingerprints you would have. You can check your fingers. Each person has. Um, each of your fingers have different uh, fingerprints. Um, behavior biometrics is next, and that's um, the way you react to things. Uh, voluntary, that makes sense, you know, you choose to do something. Semi-voluntary is like, if you're feeling really sad and your face like frowns, that's semi-voluntary because you don't really choose that, but your face still does it. Um, involuntary is like if you have a seizure or something, that's involuntary, and automatic is the way you walk or learning to play an instrument. Um, oh, so, it, well, now I'll move on to issues. In biometrics, if any of these um, biometric three are compromised, um, the result could be denial of service, intrusion, repudiation, or function creep. And um, some of the ways that this can fail is through human factors, which is the human, the user, causing this failure or an adversary attack. Or sometimes it's also technology issues as well. Um, does anyone have any questions right now? Or I'll just keep going. Okay, so human factors, some things that could affect the biometric is user psychology, age, ethnicity, health, disability, and variability. User psychology is if you're, okay, um, if you have a, um, really, really high anxiety, and you're standing in line and you're you're going to work. You have to scan your fingerprint and you're really anxious. There's a huge line behind you, huge line in front of you, and the person right in front of you, you're almost there. They're scanning the fingerprint. The fingerprint machine is not working. You're getting anxious. You're scared. You're like, oh my god, it's not working for them. There's a huge line. Everyone must be like really angry at me, like I have to scan my fingerprint. And you get up there and the person is really, really, really anxious already, and their hands are getting sweaty and they're nervous and they're jittery. So when they scan their fingerprint, the sweat makes a biometric does not. I mean, um, fail. And they're scared. Now they're just keep. They're trying again and again, and they're anxious, and they don't know what to do. And eventually, they might just give up because of the den denial of service. Um, so that would. That's how user psychology would affect it. Age, once, um, the older you grow, you know, um, physically you change, you, your fingerprints are different, your irises are different, even though they are the most stable. Um, and it gets harder for you to understand how to use the machine, or it'll make it harder for you to see the machine or read the instructions. So that's how age affects it. Um, ethnicity, different, um, it's more like culture when I say ethnicity, because each culture might think of this as different, um, as a privacy be breach. So some cultures might not want to, you know, get their iris scanned, or maybe that's too private for them, or getting their facial um, recognition in a system. Um, and then health obviously um, goes with disability. If you're um, anxious or you can't reach the biometric system, you can't use a biometric system. And variability is just saying that humans always do something differently, and they're always doing it differently every single time. You can't do the exact same thing every single time, and that makes it really hard for computers to read the signature. Um, insider attack, there are five different types, collusion, coercion, negligence, enrollment fraud, and exception abuse. So collusion is when a legitimate user would work with, would work with the um, attacker and help him get in, and coercion is like if the legitimate user is held at gunpoint. Um, negligence is obviously just like the person forgot to log out. You know, they can, um, an attacker can get in. Enrollment fraud is when, and this one's the least common because you can't usually enroll into um, a biometric system. But sometimes uh, there are flaws, and the attacker can enroll themselves into the system. Um, exception abuse is when they hack into the system and gain root user ex access and let themselves in. And there are infrastructure attacks. Um, the different attacks are user interface, system module, interconnections, and template database. Um, user interface is like these, right down here, all different ways to hack into a fingerprint system. And these as well, this is a picture of how 
when they like when a murderer wouldn't want to get caught, they'll burn off the fingerprints of the um, of the person, so you won't know who the person is and how they died. Uh, I mean, you'll know how they died, but you won't know who they are. <laughs> um, system module is when you send a trojan in and attack the system. Interconnection is when you're sniffing the system and get access to it or piggyback onto it. Template database is when you're in and you'll check the template. I mean, check all the template and get data on the system. Some problems with biometrics is when um, you when medical record because biometrics are getting a lot better. What if they check your face and they realize that you have a type of cancer? Do you tell the person or do you not tell the person? And if um, um, the EU says that you must be notified when you're um, being tested for a biometric, but what if you're a criminal and what if the law? I mean, what if the police have to catch a person and they can't tell them that they're watching them? What do you do? Do you let them do that or do you not? But basically, in general, it's just there's a breach of privacy and you don't know how far biometrics is and how far is going too far. And that's why the title is Human to Barcode because eventually, what if your body, you can keep using your body as an authentication system, what if it turns into a barcode? You're just using it every single part and it's hard to determine when to stop. So, yeah, thank you. What well, think Khan is going to be a, a born teacher or a born uh, stand-up comedian or, or president? I don't know. Who's one of All three. All three. Okay. So, uh, uh, the real question. So, so um, you, you mentioned change, you know, because these things change. How do you think? I think it can be dealt with. Um, so one of the ideas I had was uh, if you, because you can use electrophysiological biometrics, you could possibly test the blood pressure in your eye, like there when you go to the eye doctor, they do do that, while getting an iris scan. Getting an iris scan and getting blood pressure, and then having your fingerprint scanned and having the same blood pressure tested, so that your blood pressure will be matching, so it would be one token, while your iris and fingerprint would be two separate tokens, checking two, um, two different templates. So I thought that would be, yes, Chai. So, uh, kind of adding on to Dr. Levitt's question, not really well, um, <laughs> Couldn't you make like a human have like an expiration date or something? <laughs> like, um, like you make them go like, you know, if you have a license, you go to the DMV when it expires and you uh -huh. get your license renewed. <laughs> so like, uh, in the same way, uh, you could probably like make like some I don't know biometric sensor or something where you like. Uh, where you go through the process again, and, and like as you age, you get you, you change, right? You said that in your presentation. Yeah. Right. So like, you, you just like update your barcode, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's what I I was guessing. Like the only way to fix the age problem is that to update it frequently. But then that doesn't really help your eyes. So if you like stop being able to see your like the fingerprint scanner as, um, and you can't really scan your finger, so that's not yeah. What if you were born without hands? Would, do you have eyes? Oh, what if you? Yeah, so that's why it's really hard for dis disabled people to like do these things because they don't have hands, or what if they can't see or hear? So that's an issue as well. Yeah. Oh, and it's always a game of cat and mouse. You can always try to block it. <laughs> see, I put it's all over my board, emphasizing it. Um, you can always try to keep like fixing it, but it's never gonna work. You, they can always like cut off your finger if they have to. So yeah.